Hey guys, it's Car Guy 11. Welcome to Car Guy 11 Live, where we talk about the most exciting news stories of the week and have a lot of fun doing it with you guys participating. So thanks for joining tonight. Um, before we get too far here and uh, while people are, are joining, let's, uh, let's review last uh, two videos. I actually didn't have a Car Guy 11 Live last week as I was in New York Auto Show. But um, if you missed it, um, the first Pittsburgh Cars and Coffee uh, was a few weeks ago now, and I made a video on it. So pretty cool, pretty fun vehicles, some classics and new. And uh, it was really cool to see this uh, old Bronco um, resto mod. So that was that was pretty cool to see, and tons of other great ones in there. I guess not a lot of people love love these videos as it didn't get great views, but um, I don't know. I wanted to make make it first one of the year. It's an exciting time. So hopefully you uh, check that one out. And then last week I installed a performance air filter in the Corvette. So that was that was pretty cool. I uh, did a comparison. From stock to to the new air filter, uh, unfortunately, didn't see noticeable gains, but um, just some subtle improvements in sound and um, and throttle response. So definitely check that one too if you haven't seen it yet. But yes, as I said uh, last week, the whole week i was in new york new york auto show uh and car girl 11 joined me we um explored new york so unfortunately i didn't get to have a car guy 11 live and this is a little late um on the show it's about a week late but um but we can still have some fun and talk about some of the best uh models from that show and of course um some corvette news that you know i'm also missed uh, while I was gone, but um, we got a couple people on already. Hey, Autonut, thanks for joining us, and Matt Rosenthal, hello, hello, and we got Rising Emperor's Gaming. Are you doing another five hundred dollar car challenge? Um, we may. We were talking about it this summer. Uh, I'm not sure it'll happen this year or not, but. Uh, Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We never know. And um, we usually put those together pretty quick uh, so we don't have a lot of time to find a car. And that's that's part of the fun. So we'll see if we uh, evolve our schedules line up and we can put something together. But there are a lot of things happening this summer and including uh, C8 reveal date was announced so happening in july and i really plan on being there once they release uh where it's going to be and and um uh what type of uh, if it's going to be public private i don't know yet we there's still a lot to find out about that but and uh, unfortunately no new information in new york even though they drew they drove that prototype c8 in new york the week prior so unfortunately uh it was not there i was kind of hoping it was going to be hidden away in a corner <laughs> in the chevy stand or something but um no didn't see it while i was in new york so unfortunately but um yeah so let's start talking about new york auto show and it was the first time I went to this show, uh, and 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 I went went during media days, of course. So pretty exciting. Um, tons of actual reveals. Not not all spectacular. A lot of them were trims, but um, yeah, several 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 models. If you guys want to talk about any in particular, definitely um, comment in the in the chat. But um, one thing that's pretty cool about new york is it was better attended as far as auto manufacturers and um 
and media. There was a ton of them. Now, the venue was smaller, so the Javis Center just can't, uh, doesn't have the room uh, of the other um, conference centers. But it was funny. Uh, there were actually two levels. A lot of manufacturers, especially the big ones like Chevy, Toyota, Ford, they had one level of their cars and then another level of all their trucks. So it was kind of split up just because of real estate in there. But um, that was kind of weird. And then it was tough. There were so many media. It was The press conferences were just flooded and you couldn't see because the even the, the platforms weren't raised up either so if you if you were in the back forget about seeing anything so that was kind of unfortunate i didn't like that but um i tried to cover some of the best of the show and you'll be seeing videos here uh shortly starting on saturday actually of what i thought was the most interesting of the show so we have Apple Jacks here. I'm out trucking. I'll catch everyone Saturday when I'm back. Have a great show. Thanks, Apple Jacks, and I appreciate you watching after. And that reminds me, you can always listen to this as a podcast on um, Apple, I, uh, Apple iTunes uh, podcast. So just search for Car Guy 11 Air, and you can listen to it. And you may even be able to listen to it live. I, I've never um, – I haven't been able to verify it, obviously, since I'm on the – on the uh, show, but if anyone has, uh, let me know if uh, if you can actually listen to it live. That would be interesting, and and it prob probably although it doesn't post to YouTube um, the actual video until after, so I'm not sure. But it is playing live on YouTube, so maybe it does. That'd be interesting to know. But anyway, um, yeah, let's let's try to get through some of these that I thought were um thought were interesting oh and back to what i was saying as far as well attended manufacturers there were a lot of exotics there so um let me bring it up and um we talked about a lot of these actually during the geneva show car guy 11 live so um the first one is the koenigseggs there were two koenigseggs there uh, the Jesco is the new one with 1500 horsepower on E85. So very cool to see it in person. Um, you couldn't sit in it, but you could go right up to it and take pictures and stuff. And they had the doors open. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't sit in them, but it was pretty neat. Um, there was also a CCX there and then um there was a there was bugatti the sheer on the special sport 110 was there so all in that carbon fiber blue carbon fiber very cool again i'm not totally into these hyper cars but you know it was cool just to see be around them i I'll probably never see them in person um especially in the area where i live but um, it was cool to see them there. There were also Lambos. Uh, there was not the new Evo, uh, but they had an Aventador uh, SVJ. And um, there were a couple other specialty, um, like, race cars. Or very oh, they had a Rem Rimac. Uh, that was the one. Richard Hammond crashed in. <laughs> so they had a, a section of that and they were from the manufacturer. They were not um, people's cars. Uh, Autonaut says, was the new Sonata as ugly in person that is in the photos? Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about this one actually last, but I'll bring it up first. Um, what I have to say about it. Let's bring it up here. Um, yes, unfortunately, the grill, well, I should say it's not as ugly. It does look a little better in person. Let me get to see if I can get a, where's a good picture here? Um, it does look a little better in person than the picture. This picture does look pretty crappy. What was cool, though, 
is, well, it's a cool idea. I don't think they quite pulled it off. Is the LED lighting that wraps into the hood. You never see that and it fades out. Uh, I don't like the breaks in the lines. It And it's a chrome strip. I, it, there's a break in the chrome strip. I don't know if we can... We can see it here. Let's see this this one. Yeah, see this break here. I I didn't like that either. Um, like I said, it's a cool idea. I just it looks like it's put together. So, uh, and it does have a you know some cool features. You can open a door with your phone and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it, it it's it's not my cup of tea. I think they wanted to get back to better styling or or more more styling because the previous gen before the current gen, you know, had a very good styling. I liked it. Then they went to more mainstream in the current gen. I don't think it sold as well. And now they tried to do some styling that to me didn't didn't come out didn't <laughs> didn't work real well what do you guys think of that one but yeah so they're they're trying to sell sedans so i guess they're trying to be daring with the styling but all right let's 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 move on to another one that was uh that was pretty cool to show up in new york was rivian and actually, there'll be a video on Rivian SUV and truck on Saturday. And the Rivian was pretty cool because um, while well, it debuted in LA and it hasn't shown up in any other auto show except for New York here. So uh, you'll you'll see more details about that in Saturday's video. Uh, Autonet says, was Stinger GTS orange the same color as the Mazda 30th anniversary? Um, I did not see the Mazda 30th anniversary. I know it showed up in Chicago. I didn't go that this year. But, yes, it was very orange, uh, probably uh, very similar. Uh, what was cool about it, it has drift mode and... Let me see if I can bring it up here. Um, it has drift mode and a new all-wheel drive system, but it's going to be very limited. So it's a special edition, and I'm hoping that this will this rear uh, new all-wheel drive system will show up in the production regular model for excuse me, for 2020, uh, it doesn't make sense for them to develop a whole new all-wheel drive system just for this special model, which is only 800 units. So um, I expect we'll see that for the 2020 model year. But yeah, anybody have any any questions or, or want me to talk about specific models, uh, definitely let me know because I wasn't planning on talking about that one since it was a, um, since it was a limited model. But anyway, um, let me move on to the next one. Let's see here. All right, so Porsche was also there, which uh, they haven't been lately at some of these auto shows, so that was pretty exciting. Um, Porsche had this Speedster, which is basically this, it's a convertible with that hard, um, hard top, not hard top. It's a soft top with the that bump on the back, um, the Speedster. Now, this is a very limited edition. It's based off the GT3 RS, 503 horsepower, manual only. It's It reminds me of the, the R, the GT911 uh, GT3 R they had in the last gen. Um, it's going to be very expensive. 
Yes, uh, I don't know. It says two hundred seventy-five thousand. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, this is one of those that are going to be very, very uh, limited and expensive. Uh, but I did get to sit in it, <laughs> and there will be a video on this one. Um, this is based on this is the now the old 911 the the new 911 was also there uh so I'll, I'll have a video on that but um this is the last model of the 991.2 i guess which is the uh previous gen now uh autonut also says what's your thought about the ct5 and how it fits in the new lineup yes Let's get to that one. Um, that was one I was going to talk about. And we, we kind of talked about it a few weeks ago when it was revealed to the press. But, um, yeah, let's bring it up here. There will be a video on this one as well. It The CT5 is actually bigger than I thought. It was supposed to be in between the ATS and CTS, it's definitely closer to the CTS in size. Let's get some pictures here. Oh, there we go. Um, I don't, I don't love the the rear. The front front's decent. This is the part I don't love. This, this, it's like a fake window and um, style, like a chrome thing here. It, it looks to me like it's, it's a hatch, but guess what? It's not. Um, and I have a bit in the video open a trunk here, but this does open as a normal trunk. It's not a hatch. Um, I don't know. They should have, to me, made it a hatch. To compete with the BMW Grand Coupe and um, actually Buick has the the uh, Regal GS has the hatch. I mean, they could have easily made that um, that body shape into a, a hatch that looks like a sedan. I don't know. It says that window isn't real. No, it's not. It's black plastic and like I said, this chrome. It it's just meant to extend that. It's meant to look like a window, but it's not. So that that's the part I don't like about it. But um, here's a sport version. I don't think it's chromed. Yeah, it looks a little better without the chrome. But <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, that's how it is. Um. All right, let's let's talk about another one. Okay, the speeds there. Audi didn't have a press conference, but they did debut a revised R8. Nothing too much, just the um, updated styling in the front. I'm not a huge fan of this this car, uh, to be honest. Um, doesn't really do it for me. Uh, the pricing is reasonable, though. This shows the pricing here. So you can get a V10 with, um, you know, 5.2 liter V10 with 562 horsepower, um, 170,000. So it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Autonut says, did you sit in, did you sit in a CT5? I did sit in a CT5, yes. And um, again, I'll have a video on that one. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. On to more reasonably priced cars. Uh, Mustang had the new performance package for the EcoBoost. So with this, you're getting basically the Focus RS engine. It's a little bit detuned. And um, they're putting it in the performance package EcoBoost. So 330 horsepower this time instead of 310. Now, um, that's not, to me, a huge increase, but and it's the same 350 pound-feet of torque. 
but um, it is a little increase. I'm not sure why they're not just upgrading the engine wholesale for the EcoBoost instead of only in the performance package. But um, yeah, so that, that's what they're doing. And you can also get the quad exhaust and the Magna Ride suspension as an option in this, which previously it wasn't. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, how many people are interested in the four-cylinder Mustang? Uh, you know, it still doesn't sound the best, and I don't know. Uh, not not really for me, but what do you guys think of that one? Autonaut says, at least they won't get the head guests gets mixed up anymore. Yeah, yeah. Heard about that on the uh, RSs. That's a shame. But um, now the only thing I could think of they're not putting it in wholesale is it's it's from Spain that engine. So maybe they they don't have like unlimited. So they're they're just trying to put it in. Uh, like I said, this the performance package, but the base engine that they make, you know, hundred thousand of in uh in the regular rental car fleet mustang so all right let's move on oh mercedes had the new cla and the new a class well the a class has, has been out the cla is um refreshed here and uh this is the 35 amg 35 which is an in-between model. It's not the top end 45, it, but it's, um, it's mid-range. So it's a step between about 300 horsepower, turbo four again. I kind of like these cars. Um, it's a shame that they're front-wheel drive based. So you can see a transverse engine here. But uh, there's no pricing yet. And there was no pricing on the Mustang, I forgot to mention. Uh, so we'll have to see how it fares. Um, if these are reasonably priced, I think it'll be pretty cool. Uh, again, they're not the 45 model, so they should be um, more reasonably priced. But there's this, and again, the uh, sedan model. I did a video on this, and I do show the headroom difference and it's um it, it is a difference um because with that sloping roof line you do hit your head in a coupe so but i think the new interiors are sharp they look good quality um again i just i wish it wasn't front wheel drive base but that's pretty much how the base models are going including um including um, BMW's entry level line as well. Autonaut says, I got some major hate on my comment on Matt's video about it. I'm still going to stick with my comment. Nobody is going to want it. If they have the money, they will buy use 5.0 instead. Yeah, you're talking about the Mustang. Um, I agree. I, I don't know who this car is for. Um, maybe now that the RS isn't um isn't available anymore in the market uh they'll go for this especially if this car is pricey and with the performance package it it, it probably will be because the gt performance package with the mag right magna ride and all that is like 50 grand so this could be priced now you can get this on the base model non-premium as well either or so but still it's going to be mid 30s i'm sure um yeah <laughs> i don't know it's like matt where are you uh matt rosenthal he's talking about matt rosenthal always joins but he doesn't comment much so what's up matt i know you uh it's a school night for you and you said uh you can't stay up too late so yeah, these are kind of late, but unfortunately, uh, with my work schedule and things, this 
this kind of works for me. But yeah, if you guys let me know too, if, if this is too late or if you want it on a different day or something, let me know about that. All right, so that's the CT5. All right, so let's get into some SUVs. Lincoln now has a new small SUV, and this is the Corsair that replaces the MKC. And as you can see here, all three pretty much new SUVs. We got the Navigator, the Aviator, and the Corsair. And the Corsair definitely has a resemblance of the Aviator. So I do think they're sharp looking, all of them. Um, the interior. Oh, one thing about the exterior, I do not like this clam shell tailgate. And I think the previous version, previous gen had that as well. But I don't know. To me, that. It bothers me. I don't like that body line right there. Um, the inside is pretty nice. It has this floating stack, which I don't know if I love the floating stack, but um, good materials and stuff. Um, I think it'll be a popular SUV. Uh, there's nothing preventing it from selling, put it that way. It's going to have the 2.3 EcoBoost. Uh, they didn't mention... The um, hybrid, but I'm sure it'll have an hybrid as well. And um, Autonut says, love the Corsair except the headlights. They look cheap and don't fit the rest of the vehicle to me. Let's see if we... There's probably different versions of the, high, uh, of the headlights. Uh, that's the LED. That's probably the top top version. I'm not sure what part of the headlights there are or not. I don't. They don't really bother me. I just. This is my worst part. This this clamshell tailgate. But um, all right, let's. Uh, and then its its cousin, the Ford Escape, was also there. And the Ford Escape, Autonet says, love the tail lights are part of the tailgate. When the car car split them, they never line up and look bad. Yeah, I thought of that, but but a lot of times they do that. So when you open the tailgate, um that you still have brake lights. Like if you have a large item and you have the tailgate open, I thought actually that was uh, a law. So I wonder if they're doing something um, on the bumper that has the brake lights because that's the only way they can get, get away with that. Yeah, it looks like there is something on the bumper here. I bet these do light up with the brake lights. Um, I don't know. It says, love the taillights are part of the tailgate. When cars split them, they never line up. looks bad. Straight look on the headlights look like a Malibu. Okay. <laughs> I didn't notice that again, but yeah. I didn't spend a lot of time with the Corsair. Just, I mean, I went to the press conference and then it was bombarded and I had to leave because it was like, it was, uh, it was too much. So that, that was one thing at New York. It, like there was so many, so much media in a small space. So, but all right, let's, uh, yeah. So the, the, the new escape was also there. First time seeing it in person. And I'm not thrilled with the styling either, but I think I know why they're doing it. And that is because they, this is, re, they're, Ford's replacing all the cars in their lineup. So this is meant to look like a car, basically a, a high car. It's not meant to look like an SUV. 
it's not as boxy like the old old ones. So I can see why they're doing that. But um yeah, doesn't mean I love it. Um the interior's decent. I don't I don't love that they're doing this the pop up screen. It's not pop up, it's 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 stuck there, but I don't like how it how it is like that, but and then also the rotary shifter. Don't love that. But otherwise the interior is pretty decent. But yeah, and then power is not the best either. I think it's a uh um 1.5 liter. Oh, they do have the, the hybrid. The hybrid you can get in four wheel drive, but the plug in hybrid you cannot get in four wheel drive. Yeah, it's only a hundred. Yeah, 1.5 liter, only 180 horsepower. So, all right, let's move on. Another mainstream SUV, the new Toyota Highlander made its debut there um it's not a huge departure from the last model but it it does look better in my opinion uh and then the interior has is very much updated with tech with the screens and everything it was really outdated before but i again i didn't spend too much time with this vehicle but um i know i don't know what do you think of the new styling. Uh, I know you had a problem with it before looking like a minivan, but um, I don't know. It's not much improved in the rear. I think the front looks better though. So again, not one I really spent a lot of time with. All right. Let's let's move on. Uh, another one I didn't spend a lot of time with, but um, you know, Autonut says much better. It looks more like an SUV than a lifted station wagon. Um, speaking of station wagons, Subaru Outback station wagon, although they don't call it that, new one debuted. The one thing about the display, though, was really cool. It was like a forest. For Subaru, small but forest, um, and then there was a lighted floor. It it was pretty cool, the the display, but um, oh, and then the in the interior. Of this has this huge twelve inch touchscreen vertically. So that's that's pretty neat. That's on the Legacy and the Outback now. Import the net the message with with us. What's up? Thank thanks for joining us, Martin. All right, and then this one is pretty interesting. VW teased another pickup. This time, though, this Tar Tarok pickup. This time, this is very, very much car car like. It's not not even close to being a pickup. It's a it's a car or an SUV with a pickup bed. Very small. And uh, I know Autonut wanted me to look at this one. I will have a video on it. But, um, yeah, as you can see, it's a deep. Look at it. Look how deep this is. But, you know, it's very, very short. And, um, yeah, I don't know if they'll end up making it. But VW does have a pickup in Europe, a real, not a real pickup, but it's it's more more like a medium size, um, still a unibody, but it's it's um, it's more more truck than this. This is definitely a car. So, but anyway, um, that is those are the ones I picked out. If you want to talk about any more. Uh, let me know, but um, um, cool show. I mean, like I, like I said, there was a lot of lot of press conferences, a lot of reveals. Nothing like terribly exciting for me, at least. But um, 
I'm glad I went. Now I've gone to every U.S. auto show, major auto show. So L.A., L.A., Detroit, Chicago, and New York. And um, um, yeah, we'll see next year. Detroit's moving to June. I do prefer the auto shows in the winter, though. I, there's something about the winter shows that I really like. Um, it gives you something to do in the winter. It gives you something to talk about. gives you something to look forward to. Um, for me, even this New York show in the spring or car she season um, wasn't as great for me. I don't know. That's just me, though. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? And I'm a little bit worried about the Detroit show moving to June. Um, I know that's why they want to move it to June for better attendance because they have it in January at the worst time of the year in Detroit. But I don't know. I, I guess if they combine it with the outdoor car show and stuff like that, it might be might be cool. But um I don't know. I really like the winter shows because there's so much else, else going on in the, in the warmer weather. So import domestic says, I want an SUV that has plenty of power and gives me good gas mileage that I can use for Lyft and Uber. The Infiniti QX is unfortunately would be a perfect, but it has a CVT transmission. QX 60. Um, yeah, in, uh, yeah, Martin. I actually thought Infinity used that seven-speed automatic, but yeah, I guess the XC60 does use the CVT. Um, yeah, uh, as far as Infinity goes, yeah, I guess, I guess um, you're out of luck there. Although they think they have some hybrids, or they're coming, or they. You know, they will be showing up soon. Autonet says X5 is fairly quick and I can easily get in the 20s. Yeah, I bet though in city, like Ubering people and stuff, you're not going to do as well. Autonet. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to. We're going to definitely look forward to the C8 here coming up in uh, July. I think it's July 18th. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be, I'm sure we'll be getting more and more news. At least we know when it's going to be now. So that, that's exciting. Martin says, my 2015 Infiniti... Q70L has a traditional seven-speed automatic transmission. It's awesome on the highway, and I can actually get almost 500 miles on a tank. Yeah. Most cars are good on the highway, not, not so good in um, the city. And Billy says, can't wait for July. Yeah, I agree with you there, Bill. So it's going to be exciting. Um, I also heard a rumor that in July... The G Porsche Cayman GT4 will be revealed at the Good Word um, Festival of Speed in London. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> two cars, two, two really cool sports cars are debuting that month. Um, Martin says, unfortunately, in the city, I can only get 330 to 350 miles range. Yeah, that the hybrids are good, good for the city. So any type of, you know, the Camry hybrid, the Fusion hybrid, stuff like that. And Autonaut says, my lowest was 18. Keep in mind, I drive in Chicago, not exactly highway speed. Yes, <laughs> a lot of traffic there. But all right, guys, well, I'm going to end it here. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the, um, New York show wrap up and stay tuned for videos. It won't be, um, it won't be just talking about the models. There'll be some extra, extra things in there. Definitely stay tuned for that. Um, 
And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video and see you in the next Car Guy 11 live. So, all right, take take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one.